Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to be explaining why I feel that Daryl Dixon has greatly improved as a character during Season 9 of The Walking Dead. Now this video will contain spoilers which cover the entirety of the show so consider yourselves warned. Anyway without further ado, let's begin. Daryl Dixon burst onto the scene during The Walking Dead's initial season as the bad boy redneck with a heart of gold with him quickly going on to become a fan favourite. The phrase if Daryl dies we riot became a meme in its own right and for a while it seemed like the golden boy of The Walking Dead could do no wrong. That was until season 6 to 8 came along. During this period of the show, Daryl lost his mojo completely, as well as seemingly his ability to talk, with him just spending the best part of three seasons grunting in the corner like a moody teenager. It's important to point out that none of these criticisms I'm bringing up are Norman Reedus's fault because the dialogue or lack of it that he had to work with during these three seasons was pretty awful. As I said in my video that I made about a year or two ago regarding why I felt that Daryl was becoming a bad character, Daryl seemed to only exist on the show from season 6 onwards just to turn up every now and then to blow something up or ride a motorcycle. There was no character growth, instead he was just the guy the show wanted to go to when they wanted someone to do something that looked cool. And whilst Daryl has undoubtedly done a lot of cool shit over the years, there's more to him than just a guy who throws grenades into tanks. I'm sure that we all remember these badass moments, but it was actually the quiet moments that really made me fall in love with his character in the first place, and I didn't end up liking him just because he blew some saviours up. I mean, how good is the speech that he gives to Carol during Cherokee Rose? Or how about the time when he opens up to Beth about the abuse that he suffered at the hands of his father? And how can you not love the scene of this seemingly tough guy calling Judith little ass kicker as he fed her in his arms? These are the moments which come into my head when I think of why I like Daryl Dixon, but sadly, these type of moments were pretty much non-existent since the introduction of Negan. Now, I know many people believe the reason as to why Daryl wasn't himself during season 7 and 8 in particular is because of the time that he spent in Negan's cell. However, even if you do find this to be a satisfying explanation, it still doesn't change the fact that I found him to be extremely unlikable at times during the All Out War saga. Killing those who surrender is not a Daryl Dixon thing to do, yet he shoots and kills a saviour who Rick gives his word to, and then later shoots Morales in the back, a guy who he was with at the start of the outbreak without even trying to talk to him or explain to him what Negan was really like. I also think the conflict between him and Rick felt incredibly forced, and part of the reason behind this is that Daryl just wasn't given any convincing dialogue to help explain why he suddenly hated his best friend. It just felt like this narrative arc was included for the sake of including it. So when the news broke that Andrew Lincoln was leaving with Norman signing a huge contract to star as the main character, I honestly didn't have any hope that a guy who had barely said a word during the last two seasons prior to this would be able to pull it off, but somehow he has. I'm not suggesting that he's managed to fill the gap that Rick has left completely because Rick is the walking dead, but he has done a better job than I thought he would ever be able to do. Right from the get-go, Daryl is given more to do in season 9 than he had throughout the entirety of season 7 and 8. The conflict between him and Rick actually makes sense this time around. Daryl was still angry at the saviors and still angry at himself, believing that it was him who got Glenn killed, yet here Rick was advocating not only working together with the saviors and simply forgetting about all they'd done, but also keeping Negan alive. If it were up to Rick, Gregory would probably still be alive as well, but in Daryl's mind this guy had betrayed his friends one time too many, with him orchestrating an attack on Maggie proving to be the final straw. Daryl walking in on the ocean siders holding up Arat as Cindy recounted the story of Arat smiling as she killed her brother, reconfirmed Daryl's belief that they shouldn't be showing their enemies mercy because they simply didn't deserve it. Both of these events meant that Daryl could no longer sit back and allow Negan to carry on living at Alexandria, culminating in him and Rick coming to blows with one another. The difference between the pair's confrontation in Season 9 compared to Season 8 is night and day. We've been provided with enough context to come to an understanding as to why they both felt the way they did. It was clear to us that Daryl believed that Negan had to die, and it was also made clear since the start of the season as to why Rick opposed this and wanted things to be different. Both wore their hearts on their sleeves during their arguments in the pit, and hearing Daryl ask why Negan should live when Glenn and Abe didn't get to was the moment when it all clicked, and I thought to myself, yeah I get it, I get why these two best friends are really pissed off with one another. The great thing about this scene is that deep down you can tell they still care for each other, and it felt like they both hated what had become of their friendship, which isn't something I felt back in season 8 when Daryl was trying to punch Rick in the face on the side of the road. Once Rick left the show, Daryl really stepped it up a notch to fill in the huge void left by Officer Friendly. Obviously, as expected, it took a few episodes for the other characters to convince Daryl to give up his nomadic life and rejoin them, but I'm okay with that. Let's not forget that Daryl had spent the best part of six years looking for Rick, 
six years regretting the fact that he spent his final days with Rick at odds with him. So of course his apparent death would hit him pretty hard, which is why I didn't mind the miserable Daryl of the Scott Gimple era resurfacing during these couple of episodes. Also he gets a dog called Dog, which is about as imaginative a name I can imagine Daryl giving a pet. I've mentioned a lot of positive points so far, but for me I think the real masterstroke of Season 7 is having Daryl rather than Rick be the one in conflict with Alpha. When Rick left I was understandably disappointed that I would never get to see Rick come face to face with one of the comic's best villains. However, with Daryl, the conflict just feels so much more personal and it's actually all the better for it. The fact that Daryl and Lydia share a history of being abused adds more weight to the conflict between him and Lydia's mother than if Rick were the one in his place. It gives me more reason to believe that he and Lydia would bond and provides Daryl with more motivation for wanting to take down Alpha. With Daryl being the one heading the fight against the Whisperers, it's resulted in him being in a position whereby he's found himself interacting with a wider cast of characters than he's done for quite some time. As corny as it was seeing Beta somehow survive being pushed down an elevator shaft, I loved their confrontation. It was almost like Beta was designed to be Daryl's nemesis. I can't for instance imagine in my head Rick going toe to toe with a pair of knives against Beta and coming out on top, because let's be honest, as much as I like Rick, he's not the most graceful of fighters. However, as I previously mentioned, Daryl is a guy who we've seen blow up tanks and fire rocket launchers. He's the go-to guy for action scenes on the show, so why not just embrace his crazy past antics and have him fight against a huge seven foot guy who is covered in zombie skin. Yeah I'll admit it sounds dumb and I guess it is, but it was bloody entertaining and I think only Daryl could have really pulled that moment off. Connie is another character who Daryl ended up spending a fair bit of time with this season, with these two going on to form an unlikely friendship. With Connie being deaf, Daryl can't just look off into the distance and grunt at her, instead he has to look directly at her to communicate, meaning that ironically we've probably seen him talk the most he's ever done whilst being around a lady who can't hear him. I also like that Connie doesn't take any shit from him, she's very good at expressing how she feels and doesn't shy away from making that clear to Dazza. I know there's a ton of Dow and Cal shippers out there, but to be honest I feel as though he actually has more chemistry with Connie. Now I'm not saying anything will happen because let's be honest the human race will probably be extinct before Dow Dixon gets into a relationship, but you never know. Dow Dixon is just one of a handful of characters who have massively improved during season 9. Instead of doing this video, I did actually consider making a video which listed the five characters who had improved the most during the latest season. Characters such as Tara, I mean her being dead is certainly an improvement. No, alright, I'm joking, I did actually start to come round to her this season. And Henry, who admittedly I couldn't stand in season 8, but now he's someone I will defend till the day that I die. However, I decided against going this idea and instead focus on Daryl, because to me his improvement is the most significant. Daryl Dixon is tasked with carrying this show forward. And if he weren't to improve and instead just remain more or less the same as he was throughout the Negan saga, I honestly think this season would have been a bit of a disaster. But Angela Kang and her writers have pulled it off and have brought Daryl back to being the character that I used to love, and long may that continue. So there you go, there's a quick video as to why I think Daryl Dixon is now back, sort of a response to the video I made about him being a bad character, and let me know how you feel. Do you like the new Daryl that we've seen this season, and has anyone else uh, impressed you as well? Whatever your thoughts, please let me know below. So yeah, that's about that. Um, there's one more Gimple video that will come out next week, but I'm going to schedule um, when I'm on holiday. But until then, I won't see you until a week or so. So, so yeah, enjoy yourselves, behave please, and I'll catch up with you in about a week's time. So as always, thank you for your support and thank you for watching. And until next time, goodbye.